Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Sir Alex Ferguson Challenge with Sheffield United. In today's episode we have concluded our January transfer business. We've played a lot of games, our form haven't, hasn't really recovered, but let's take a look. But before we get into the schedule, we will have a look at what has happened during the January transfer period. We'll ignore a lot of the loans out because they are new signings who have loaned out to get first team football. The only major out was really John Egan who joined West Ham for £3 million. It's a lot cheaper than what I would have liked to have sold him for. He was very much a backup player and he didn't really play all that much for us this season. He played two games. Um, he was our fourth choice centre back but he never really got the game time and I'd promised him I would let him leave. He ended up kicking up a fuss and we agreed on a £3 million fee. West Ham came in and matched it and he's joined them. So it's a little bit disappointing. It weakens our strength and depth, but um, he wasn't that great anyway. And the other major out was Chris Basham, who has joined Portland. He's a 32-year-old centre-back as well. Losing a lot of those centre-backs, but he's went. He, he had a fee agreed in the summer and it's only just went through as I'm assuming the MLS season has just started or their transfer windows just opened. But yeah, no big loss here. And that brings us to the inns where there is pretty much no major signings. They are all youth players who are ones for the future, but they're all very, very high potential players. Gustavo Pereira was the first one from Jaguars for £850,000. He's a central midfielder, Colombian, Metzala or box-to-box -box midfielder, which is both what we play. Really high uh, teamwork and work rate already at only 18 years old and really good technique. He's got a lot of work to do in his technical attributes, but... I suspect once he gets some game time at some major clubs, he will be able to boost that up magnificently. Uh, his physicals are okay as well. He's a two-star current, four and a half, oh, five-star potential uh, player. And I like him a lot. 850 grand was not a bad bit of business if I do see so myself. Next up was probably our best signing in terms of young players, at least in terms of current ability. Isaac Bergman Johansson from uh, IFK, no, wherever that was. Uh, he's a central midfielder, he's Icelandic, which is interesting. Um, technically, he's a lot more well-rounded than the last player. Mentally, he's pretty good as well, as is his physicals. He's a two-and-a-half star, five-star player currently. The Both of these players have went out on loan, by the way. Gustavo Pereira went to Medellin on loan for the rest of the season. And um, Johansson went out on loan to Orebro, SK in Sweden. So physically, I really like this guy in the centre of the park. He can play as the Metzala. He can play as the box-to-box. -box. He's technically an advanced playmaker, but he won't really be playing that for me. But um, he gives us good coverage across the pitch as well, should we change formation with defensive midfielder and attacking midfielder. So uh, nice to get him in for 2 by one And interesting again, Icelandic player who could become a major part of our first-team squad in the future. Next up was Mithat Gokan Sisek from Galatasaray for £1.1 million. Another central midfielder. And in fact, he looks better than the Icelandic midfielder. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, technically, he looks fantastic. Mentally, he is where he's weakest. Physically, he's fantastic as well. Two-star current, uh, five-star potential player. He's went out on loan to Kasim Paza in Turkey. He's already played four games, got one assist for them. So he's getting the game time that he needs. Uh, probably next season might be a little bit too early for him to come into the first team squad, but if we're struggling for strength and depth, I might end up just bringing him in anyway, because that is one of the key areas where we are massively lacking his strength and depth. Um, so we'll see how he gets on for the rest of the season, and he's one who could potentially make the first team squad next season. Next signing, Slavko Jevric from Red Star, £975,000, a really, really talented centre. Half. Obviously some glaring weaknesses in his game, but he's only 18 years old, two-star current, five-star potential. Um, I was really looking for players when I was got me when I sent my scouts out. I was looking for players who were, who were at least two-star current potential, uh, current ability, purely because the ideal world would be these go out and loan for maybe this season and maybe next season, but ideally we get them into the squad as early as possible and the kind this kind of player i would rather have him in the squad than the likes of chris basham you know he has went out on loan though so he's went out to ride on loan for the rest of the season but again another player who would quite easily make it into the first team squad should he be needed guillermo soto was the next one we brought in for 1.1 million pounds he is another center half another colombian physicals are just great already for 18 years old mentally he's pretty weak um, he's got a lot of work to do to improve those attributes. Technically, he's been tattling, marking, heading. What more do you need, really? At 18 years old, two-star current, five-star potential. He's went out on loan to... Where did he go? 
uh, Rio Negro Aguilas. So he's went out alone back to Colombia. Um, we'll see how he gets on. He's another one. I probably prefer Slavko Jevrich. Uh, a bit more well-rounded. Some outstanding attributes in the physicals in terms of the strength and jump and reach. But they're both pretty talented centre-halves. And I'm glad to have them both in. Next up, Bruno Amione. He was signed to replace John Egan. He's not a great centre-half. Two and a half star current, four star potential, but I needed someone to slot straight into the first team squad. And at only 20 years old, he's still got room to improve. Um, but yeah, he's a direct replacement. He's not great for determination, I really don't like. But um, he's got the strength, he's got the jump and reach, he's got a little bit of pace. Technicals are fine, mentals are fine. He's decent enough. So yeah, no really major signings in terms of the first team squad. Uh, there was a few bids who came in for some of our players. You'll see uh, Tilo Kera is a bit miffed that I priced him out of a move to FC Bayern. They came in with like a 19.75 million pound offer. I said I wanted 60 and they backed off. So um, they weren't back in for him. On Jean, I think he had an offer from Inter Milan at 500,000 pounds per month loan, which, <laughs> why? Why would I even do that? So uh, he's still at the club, but he is still wanted by some of the big boys in Europe. Other than that, there hasn't really been much interest in any of our first team players, which is fine by me. Um, if some of them go for mega money, that's fine as well. It means we could strengthen the squad in depth because if you see our transfer funds, we are quite low at only £7 million. But um, I'm happy with our business, getting a lot of young players in. We're starting that regen conveyor belt that we like to do, get them in cheap, sell them high. If they make it in the first team squad, all the better. But yeah, that's how things have went in terms of transfers. In terms of games, it's been a pretty mixed bag all things told. The first game of January was against Macclesfield in the FA Cup third round, which we won comfortably 3-0. Danny Olmo, Erling Haaland and George Baldock with the goals all in the first half. Next up was the first leg in our semi-final in the League Cup against Everton, which we managed to win 3-2. Haaland and Esposito with the goals, Esposito with the double. Haaland did miss a penalty quite early on, 35 minutes in. Mano Salomon and Gilfie Sigurdsson gave them hope though in the second leg, so it's not a job done. Next up was an away tie against Manchester City in the Premier League where we ended up being defeated 2-1. Florentino Luis put them in front inside two minutes. Jean-Pierre equalised. They had a man sent off in the 40th minute and I thought this might be our time to beat Man City in the Premier League. But it wasn't a B. Thomas Lamar gave them the lead in the 50th minute. And you look at the match stats, even with 10 men, they were still dominant. Next up was a 1-0 away win in the Premier League against Watford. Haaland with the goal in the 64th minute. They were a really poor side. I mean, we haven't been performing great, but in total, they didn't really create any. I mean, we didn't create much. They didn't create anything. It was two bad sides playing against each other, but we got the three points. Next up was a 3-0 home win against Crystal Palace. Haaland with a double and Jean-Pierre with one. They did have a man sent off in the 52nd minute, which made it a lot easier for us to control the game in the second half. And another three points in the Premier League. We, were, we really needed back-to-back -back wins. And then the most embarrassing result of the all came in the FA Cup fourth round. The board expect us to finish in the, at least get to the fifth round. So we wanted to win this game. I played <laughs> pretty much a full strength side. And we drew 1-1 against Championship Huddersfield, who sit in 10th. And it wasn't even as if we dominated them and they just FM'd us. No, it was a pretty even game. Could have went either way. And we, away from home, we've got the replay to play at the day. Really, really disappointed in this result. Next up was the League Cup second leg in the semi-final. And we managed to scrape through away from home against Everton. Winning 3-2 in aggregate after this nil-nil performance. It was a back and forth game. Either side could have got some goals. But as you can see, John Pickford with the player of the match for Everton kept us out. But we didn't need it. We managed to get through thanks to the first leg. And the final game in January was a 2-1 away defeat against Leicester City. Daniel Amati put them in front inside two minutes. Nani Demata gave them two goal advantage in the 90th minute. Alexander Isaac scored in the 92nd as a bit of a consolation. We had two goals disallowed in this game, which was devastating. I think it was one just before their goal as well, which would have brought it to 1-1. Um, but it wasn't a B. We were suffering a little bit with injuries. Both of our wing-backs are injured, our first choices. Um, the likes of Renato Sanchez and stuff suspended for a couple of games and um, Esposito has been injured for a long period as well so we've been we've been a little bit less than our full capabilities but we should still be winning games so in terms of the Premier League this is how things look we currently sit in 8th position in the Premier League we're now behind Tottenham as well 
So we've got a lot of work to do if we are to qualify for Europe this season. It looks like we're going to be a battle for sixth again. Um, top four is completely nine points clear of us now. It seems unlikely at this stage of the season we'll be able to claw that back. We do have a couple of games in hand on some teams though. So if we're able to turn our form around, who knows, we might compete. But ideally and more realistically, top six. That brings us to today's episode where we'll be playing that fourth uh, round FA Cup replay against Huddersfield and a home tie against third placed Chelsea in the Premier League. Let's get to the matches. So as I said earlier, the board do expect me to get to the fifth round of the FA Cup and I would like to match that expectation. So we are going to go full strength against um, Huddersfield again a day, even though the championship opposition, we really, really need this win. Um, so this is going to be the line of Jack Butland and goal, Bella Kochap, Jean and Kerra as our centre-backs with George Baldock and a returning Luca Pellegrini as our wing-backs. Renato Sanchez and Danny Olmo in the centre with Jean-Pierre in behind Haaland and a returning Esposito. Huddersfield go pretty attacking even away from home with the 4-2-3-1. They've got a lot of familiar faces from their Premier League campaigns. Um, but hopefully we should have enough to beat them. <laughs> They're a championship side mid-table. Come on boys. First highlight of the game, nine minutes in. Jean-Pierre nicks the ball from a Huddersfield throw-in. That was an absolutely terrible throw-in. And he drives forward. He's carrying the ball all the way. He's in behind. The keeper manages to pull off a save. Haaland picks it up inside the box. He's closed down quickly though. Baldock takes a strike. And Huddersfield managed to get it clear. Good early signs. Another highlight now. Danny Olmo with a free kick. It's played at the back post. And it hits the Huddersfield defender, Carlin Grant. The attacker midfielder on the right-hand side. And we managed to go 1-0 up. That's... A pretty poor goal to have conceded. I would be absolutely raging if that had went in against me. But we've managed to benefit from it this time. And Sheffield United go 1-0 up. Another highlight now. It's a corner from Huddersfield. <laughs> Lewis O'Brien. What a goal that was. This is a kick from the edge of the box. Brings Huddersfield level inside 23 minutes. I mean, what's, what's going on here? Is this some sort of conspiracy? Has the update affected the game? I haven't changed my tactics since the update. So... I probably has and I'll probably just need to relook really at this tactic altogether but um, Lewis O'Brien getting them level inside a minute another highlight now another free kick for us Danny Olmo plays it in on Jane's back post Pellegrini heads it and it's blocked on the line by the Huddersfield defence 35 minutes in now we have a, another highlight Ziegler on the left hand side with a throw in a world player Ziegler as well but Jean-Pierre picks up the pass from Ziegler he must have got confused for a second Jean-Pierre's in behind his one on one of course it's not going in the highlight continues over the corner and Danny Olmo plays it in. It's cleared, but it's going to go back out to Danny Olmo on the edge of the box. He gets it in, Pellegrini with the header, and it's saved by the keeper. 42 minutes in now, Sanchez. Oh, that was a dodgy, dodgy pass. Thankfully, we've got away with that. And Kerra finds Pellegrini on the left-hand side to Danny Olmo. He switches it to Baldock on the right-hand side. Haaland's in the box, takes a strike, second bite of the cherry. And there he is, he gets his goal, his 14th goal of the season. He's turned it around a little bit since we've changed him to a complete forward. And uh, nice nice for us to get to 2-1 before half-time against championship opposition. Um, it's a little bit fortunate how it all comes about. Balled up with a nice player. Haaland very lucky to get the second bite of the cherry, but he manages to do it at the second time of asking 2-1. And there we have it, half-time, Sheffield United 2, Huddersfield 1. Let's kick off for the second half. We need a better performance, hopefully, and a few more goals from us. Another highlight now, Esposito plays the ball to Danny Olmo. I thought he had Jean-Pierre in behind there, and he dilly-dallies on the ball a bit too much, and he ends up getting challenged by Stevens for Huddersfield, and Ramadan Sobby finds Matt Ritchie on the left-hand side. Jack Butlin came out, and then he bottled it, but he manages to get the save. <laughs> I mean, this, this shouldn't be this close. Another highlight now, 48 minutes in. Bella Kotchaps on the ball for us and finds Renato Sanchez who can drive down the right-hand side completely unchallenged and he's going to get to the byline. Whips a cross in and Esposito was there. He returns from his injury, gets his 10th goal of the season and puts us 3-1 up and surely now, surely through to the FA Cup fifth round. It was a decent bit of play by Renato Sanchez here. Picks up the ball on the halfway line and manages to drive into the space all the way down to the byline. And it's a nice little cross and Sebastiano Esposito on his return gets his goal. 58 minutes in now, there is a free kick. Jean-Pierre steps up to take it and he buries it in the back of the net. Jean-Pierre's 16th goal of the season from attacking midfield. And that is an absolutely delightful one from the free kick. What's that, about 30 yards out? Something like that, maybe 25? Uh, fantastic, fantastic strike. Keeper can do nothing about that. 4-1. 
With only 20 minutes to go, we will look to make some subs. Luca Pellegrini, obviously returning from injury. He deserves a little bit of a break. Danny Olmo can come off as well for Oliver Norwood, and I'm going to make a three. John Flex going to come on for Renato Sanchez. Another highlight now with 15 minutes to go. It's Huddersfield on the attack this time. Great ball in, but it goes just over the head of everybody. Matt Ritchie manages to keep it in, though, and he finds M. Penza in the box outside O'Brien. We know he's got an absolute strike on him, but he goes back out to Matt Ritchie on the left-hand side. The ball's played in. I mean, I didn't know what's happening there. Dohani plays it in. M. Penza's there. He gets his 10th goal of the season. 4-2 with 13 minutes to go. I'm going to go defensive. <laughs> 10 minutes to go and there is another highlight. The ball's sort of nobody's really taking control of it here. It eventually falls to Oliver Norwood who takes it under control. And Jean-Pierre can play it to the defence. Oh, Bella Kochap. Oh, he very, very nearly got dispossessed by the attack and the Huddersfield players. He's, I mean, that's just an unfortunate set of incidents there. Bella Kochap has lost the ball twice. It's 4-3. It is 4-3. Isaac Mbenza with his 11th goal of the season, his second goal of the game, we're not watching it. We're going to remain to... Oh no, not another highlight, 85 minutes. They are clearly high pressing now, smelling blood with only 5 minutes to go. I can't believe, I can't believe this. It's going to be a Huddersfield attack and just feel it. Just imagine, if we if we were to lose this after being 4-1 up with what, 15 minutes to go? But Haaland drives in, he's in, please finish this. He does finish this. 15th goal of the season. His second goal of the game. 5-3. Four minutes to go. I'm not watching replays anymore. I'm I'm beyond that with this game. But uh, we'll skip that. Please just get the full time. And there we have it. Sheffield United 5. Huddersfield 3. We've managed to scrape through. It's took two legs. Um, it's took a lot of goals. But thankfully we've managed to do it this time. And we're through safely to the fifth round. Which matches the board's expectations. So they shall be, well, they're just pleased at the minute. Hopefully they'll be delighted at some point. So the next game's only in a couple of days' time. It will be against Chelsea. I'll see you there. Another deal just been agreed for Stelios Baniatos, a goalkeeper, a Greek. He looks decent for only 18 years old. And again, he's another one for the future. One and a half star current, four and a half star potential. He won't be joining the club until the end of this season and the beginning of the next one. So he will be coming in, another one to loan out. So putting the FA Cup behind us, we are back in league action against Chelsea. And this is going to be the lineup that's going to face them in today's game. Butlin in goal, Bella Kotchap on Jean and Kerra in the defence, Baldock and Pellegrini in the wing back roles, Ronaldo Sanchez, Danny Olmo, Jean Pierre, Haaland, Esposito. It's the same team that faced Huddersfield. And we didn't do so well there. So let's see how we face against Chelsea, third in the league. They've got the likes of Jaden Sanso. Sancho, Christian Pulisic, Frank Kessie, Sandro Tonali the sign in the January transfer period. I think they paid 66 million for him. He's still as good as he was on FM19. Uh, Antonio Rudiger, Edson Alvarez, Ampadu. He's okay, not really that great, but he's a youth prospect. Shalov, up front, Fedor Shalov. I'm not sure when they signed him. I think it was that was in January as well, 60 million, so they spent the money. Um, yeah, let's kick off. And when there's a highlight straight from kickoff. I don't really like it, but maybe it's going our way. Renato Sanchez with a lovely through ball for Luca Pellegrini. He was in behind. He goes for goal. Keeper with a big save. That was nice. The highlights continuing with Danny Olmo with the corner. He plays it in. It's just about cleared, but a false to Luca Pellegrini on the edge. He's surrounded by two men. Is he going to be able to do anything with this? Sandro Tonali? No. Pellegrini? Somebody? Nah. Nothing. Another highlight now. It's Baldock on the right hand side with a throw in, in an advanced position. He manages to play it back to Renato Sanchez. Plays the ball back post. Falls to Pellegrini. Hits the woodwork. Sanchez hits the woodwork as well. Please. Please. Just let me win. 30 minutes in now. Another highlight. First time Chelsea have been in possession in one of these. But we managed to win the ball back. We seem to be playing pretty well today. Which, please, please don't prove me wrong. Danny Olmo with a lovely through ball for Pellegrini on the left hand side. If he can cut it back. Of course he goes for goal. He's at the byline. Why? 32 minutes in, a highlight on the right-hand side for us this time. Erling Haaland gets the ball, goes for goal, and it goes well wide. Danny Olmo with a free kick from the edge. But it's all loose at the minute. And that's going to be it for the first half. Sheffield United nil, Chelsea nil. Some really, really good things for us from that first half. Chelsea have offered very little going forward. We've had a number of opportunities which we just haven't really connected with. Um, we've hit the woodwork twice in the same, in the same incident. 
maybe it's our time. Maybe it's not. Esposito's injured. Alexander Isaac's coming on. Only 20 minutes to go in the match. The second half has been pretty quiet. There is the first highlight of it. No, Alexander Isaac's played himself in. Kepa with a very, very easy save. I wouldn't be surprised. It was the highlight. Not, why was that a highlight? 10 minutes to go. Please don't do this to me. We managed to get rid of the ball. Pellegrini finds Alexander Isaac who's beat his man. He's in behind. He's going to go for goal with his right foot. Why? Use your weak foot. With only 10 minutes to go, we'll look to make some subs. Kieran Freeman can come on for Luca Pellegrini at left wing back. Um, and that's going to be it. I don't want to really weaken our starting 11 anymore. And this is where the weak squad depth comes into play. Um, you really want to make some changes with only 10 minutes to go, but it's really, really weakening our first 11. And here we go with 11 minutes to go. Chelsea managed to get the ball away, though. Bella Kotchap plays the ball over the top. Alexander Isaac's in behind. Use your left foot. He uses his right. Don't listen to me, my son. Ninth goal of the season. We go 1-0 up. We deserve this win. If we manage to get the three points in today's game, it is one of the most deserved we've ever had against one of the bigger clubs. But Bella Kotchap wins the ball. Big punt over the top. The Chelsea defender can't get his head on it and Alexander Isaac makes up for his last attempt and puts us 1-0 up come on only a few minutes to go in regular time there is another highlight and it is Chelsea who are in possession but they give the ball away though Renato Sanchez drives forward from the centre of midfield finds Baldock who beats his man he's in the box another team strike only injury time to go Chelsea are really pressing us hard and there is a highlight which I don't like to see. Jack Butland with a big punt up. Chelsea win it on Jean. Who's going to come out with this? It looks like it's going to be us. Alexander Isaac's in behind. He goes for goal. Kepa with another big save. He could have had a hat-trick since he came on Isaac. Danny Olmo's going to take the corner. We'll stick with it just in case. The back post Haaland it bobbles about. It doesn't look like it's going to go anywhere. Mason Mount clears. And there we have it. We've just struggled to beat Sheffield. No, not Sheffield. Huddersfield. And then we completely dominate Chelsea, third in the Premier League, and we dominated that match. It should be far more than 1-0, but we'll take the 1-0, we'll take the three points. And that has just renewed my confidence in the squad. We've been struggling for a number of months, um, particularly the back end of December towards the end of the January. But um, getting that win pushes us back to six in the Premier League table. We've still got a couple of games on a lot of teams in and around us, particularly below us. But... Um, Really, really happy with that great performance and a great result in today's episode. So looking forward to the next one. It's going to be the Carabao Cup final and probably Liverpool um, in the Premier League. So Liverpool and Man City. It's a bit of a tough one. But anyway, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.